Just before we start the episode, here's a trailer for another podcast. If you like what you hear, go and check it out. Hello, hello, ghouls, ghosts, goblins, and everything in between. Welcome to Across the Veil with host Emma and Zelda. We're two amateur cryptozoologists on a mission to explore the things that lie beyond. Beyond what? I I, I don't know. The the veil? It it just sounds poetic and mysterious. Mm, True. (laughs) Learn about cryptids, folklore, monsters, and things that are just kind of haunted. Anything that seems a little otherworldly and strange. Just like us. (laughs) New episodes out every Thursday on all of your favorite podcast platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at across.the.veil and Twitter at acrosstheveil1. We hope you join us next time. Across the Veil. Hi, I'm Laura. And I'm Jill. And this is Crime Divers. Everybody, welcome back. Hello. Oh, what? I just, <laughs> I just remembered. <laughs> I was like, we've just started. What is it? I know, but I just remembered that I said to you I was going to tell you something, and I was going to tell you in the last episode that we did because we we recorded two episodes today. Yeah. So in the last episode that we did, I was going to tell you something. So you were. And I was like, oh, I was like, what's that? I'll just tell you when we're when yeah. we're recording because it has to do with the podcast. Yeah. And then I just remembered I didn't tell you. Yeah, I totally forgot. Actually, <laughs> like, well, I'm going to tell you now because I just remembered. Ooh, it's nice. a wee spooky story. Oh, I'm interested. So, and because it's got to do with the podcast, is why I haven't told you before. Right. Okay. So it was last week sometime. Can't remember when. Surprise. <laughs> well, I, Jill's ma- memory sucks. Yeah, Jill's memory sucks, and it doesn't. It has no relevance to the story where it was, so it doesn't matter. Right, so it was okay. last week, and I was in bed, uh-huh. and. We were all in bed, so it was me, me and my husband, John, my husband, and my daughter, all in bed, and the dog, uh-huh. all asleep. And it was, what time, was it half past seven in the morning, I think it was, and I woke up mm-hmm. to your voice. To my voice? Yeah, I could hear you talking. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then I heard me talking, and I was like, that's our podcast. I can uh-huh. hear our podcast. Uh-huh. It's half past seven in the morning. How can I hear our podcast, and where the hell is it coming from? Uh-huh. So I thought... It's my daughter listened to it, and I thought she doesn't like you know none of our families listen to our podcast, do they? Not enough. <laughs> no, they're very supportive in that way, you know. Yeah. Nobody listens to it, so I thought if she listened to our podcast. Uh-huh. I thought no, that no, she, it had by seven in the morning. Anyway, she's very not, unlikely. And it was her very first episode as well. It was the um, Mary Bell episode. Oh, the Tyneside Strangler. Yeah, the mm-hmm. very first one. So, and of course, because I'm half asleep, I couldn't figure it out. And eventually, I figured out where it was coming from. Uh-huh. And it was coming from my. Alexa, which is next to my bed. My right. Alexa is just going to talk. Uh-huh. Alexa, no. She's oh. not going to talk. Sorry, no. I didn't get that. The internet is unreachable. Oh, what's wrong with my internet? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> right, Alexa. Thanks Bye. for telling us, because I didn't know that. You just spoke to it again. Oh, sorry. Right. So the one that I have next to my bed, I call it Echo uh-huh. instead of uh-huh. that word. So right. we'll call her Echo from now on so she doesn't keep answering us. Right. So it was coming from my Echo, which is next to my bed. Mm-hmm. But it was like a really, really low volume, which is why I couldn't figure out <laughs> where it was coming from. Uh-huh. So I was like, why has my Echo just started telling me our first episode? Like, yeah. how weird is that? Because we were all sleeping. Mm-hmm. And because John was sleeping next to me, I didn't want to speak to it to tell it to shut up. Mm-hmm. So I just, it's got a volume button on it, so I just pressed the volume button to turn it off with the volume. Yeah. You know, I just turned it right down. Right, mm-hmm. can't hear it. Mm-hmm. Fell back asleep. It happened again. No way. It had happened two more times no, after that. It? it woke me up two more times. So I'd turned the volume down. Uh-huh. And it came back on with the volume up. Unless it's got, like, it's programmed in it that if the volume's been down for a while, it goes back up. Well, that's all good and well, but why is she telling me my, our podcast, which I've never listened to on that device. I don't know. Our first episode, which I will not bloody listen to because it is absolutely horrendous. (laughs) So, and 
and I cringe whenever I've heard it. I've cringed, so I wouldn't yeah. listen to that now. Yeah. So why? That's weird. Eh? At half past seven in the morning, has she decided to tell? Decided the story? to start speaking to me because, like, you know, there is times uh, when I'm watching telly or something like that, and she does light up thinking that she's heard her name. Yeah. But I would have to say, Echo. Um, Maybe you're p- talking in your sleep. You're talking yourself. What? So I'm going to say, Echo, please play the first episode of Crime Divers podcast. Because <laughs> that's what I would have to say for it to come on. Yeah, I don't know. So how the hell has that happened? I don't know. That was spooky. Yeah. Has anybody else had any weird experiences with them? I've never had a weird. Well, experience. May, well, yeah, I would like to know because, as I said, like there is times when mine speaks to me when the telly's on, mm, yeah, and maybe uh, I'll yeah. pick up thinking, yeah, yeah, you heard, know, the word. I've heard her say random ones in my house, yeah, or even if you're having a conversation with somebody and it randomly starts speaking to you, but for us to be asleep mm-hmm. and randomly pick our podcast, our podcast, the first episode, and as I said, I would have to tell her, ex- I'd have to tell her, mm. which, and it was right from the start because when I heard your voice, it was you saying. Welcome to Crime Divers, you know, yeah. I'm Laura. You know, yeah. like, that's, so it was right at the start that it started. <laughs> How weird. That is very weird. So that's why I didn't, because usually I would be like, oh, I'll need to tell Laura. And I thought, no, I'll wait till the podcast because yeah. it's relevant It's relevant to the podcast and I'll tell everybody else. And as I said, I meant to tell you on the last, on the episode that we just did. But you forgot. But I forgot because, you know. Jill has a bad memory. Yeah. But I've remembered now. Well done. And there you go. How spooky was that? That is very spooky. Yeah. But if anybody else has any experience with that sort of thing happening, I'd be really interested to know because yeah. I kind of got a bit freaked out by yes, it. Yes, definitely. So anyway, we should really get on to the episode. Yes, what is it called today? It's called 40 Days of Hell. 40 Days of Hell? Mm-hmm. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. But it's not. I will tell you now, this episode is bad. Oh, okay. It's, I'm going to put a trigger warning. This consists of rape, of torture and death. Oh, well. It's a really horrendous case. I actually felt sick mm-hmm. when I was researching it and I did actually have second thoughts about whether or not I should do it because it is really bad. There's a lot of detail, like gruesome detail in it. Right, okay. So if there's anybody that doesn't want to hear me go in a lot of detail about torture and rape, then just switch off. Like We, we will not take offence to it. Mm-hmm. Just come back for the next episode. To be fair, we've not, we actually have had a gruesome one for a while, haven't we? I think it's on, it's the worst one that we had before really was Kelly Ann Bates. Mm-hmm. And this is, it's more detailed because the Kelly Ann Bates, like I t- sort of told the, the story of the injuries mm-hmm. afterwards, but this is more, this goes into more detail of the injuries actually happening. Right. And it's, as I said, it is, it's, it's really bad. So trigger, 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 trigger warning. Massive trigger warning. Yes. If anybody wants to switch off. <laughs> Can I switch we're gonna, off? We're going to end up having no listeners because they're all going to be like, okay, she's told me to switch off, so I'm going to switch <laughs> off. I'm going to be that intrigued because as much as I'm like, I'm yeah. not sure I want to hear it, but I do want to hear it. Uh, yeah. I mean, to me, when I'm listening to podcasts, it, I'm, I am intrigued to listen to the gruesome details. Mm-hmm. So I do I'm, understand when people do want to listen yeah, to it. I'm glad I've had my lunch. Yeah. And it's digested. Yeah. So, so it's, can I ask where in the world we actually are for this? We are in Japan. Oh, Japan? Yes. Oh, I was not expecting you to say Japan. Well, no, because actually Japan is quite... There's not that much crime in Japan. It's like compared to other countries. Yeah. Japan is actually quite a sort of peaceful country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Obviously, they, have them, they do have yeah, their crimes. Of course, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm seriously I'm, I'm, not, I'm procrastinating here I really don't want I'm to start scared, I'm scared to say shall we dive in I know um, yeah this let's come on let's just dive in right okay just there will be no banter there will be no nothing this, this is a bad one okay. okay right okay so if you want to listen listen let's let's go let's dive in let's dive in so Junko Furuta I think as soon as I've said that name, a lot of people will actually know what this case is. Junko. Junko Furuta. But I've heard her being called Junko, so I'm not... But I th- when I did actually look up the pronunciation, it was Junko. Right, okay. So I'm just going to call her that. And if I, if I... I will... Oh, actually, at the start of this episode, I will say if, if I have got any of these names wrong. There isn't actually that many. It's not that bad. 
considering it's Japan. Yeah. But if I have, if I do pronounce anything wrong, I will apologise in advance. Yeah, because I mean Japanese names aren't necessarily easiest to yeah. pronounce, I suppose. So, so I'm apologising now, rather than as I've said before in other episodes, rather than apologising every time. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm not sure if I've pronounced something properly. I'll apologise now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Let's go. Okay. So Junko Furuta was born on the 18th of January 1971, but. In some of the articles that I read, there was a different date of birth for her. Oh, right. So, I've I've heard this date more than I've heard the other date. The other date was in November 1971. It was still the same year. Right, So, okay. we'd, she, it's the right age. She was 17. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, but as I said, there was this, I've went with this one just because I saw, saw it more times on the other date. Okay. So, she was born on the 18th of January 1971. She lived in Misato, Saitama Prefecture, Japan. Right. No idea if that's right. No idea where that's. <laughs> it's in Japan. Yeah. She lived with her mum and dad, and she had an older brother and a younger brother. Okay. So in nineteen eighty eight, Junko was seventeen. Okay. She went to Yashio Minami High School. She was a good student, and she had really good grades. She had been working part time at a plastic moulding factory twice a week as she was saving up for a graduation trip that she had planned. Mm-hmm. She had also just accepted a job at an electronics retailer where she planned on working after graduation. So she was she was a really good student. She, mm-hmm. As I said, she had really good grades. Yeah. She was like, sort of had her life planned, planned out. Yeah, yeah. She was a really sensible girl. She wasn't into like smoking, drinking, which a lot, you know, a lot of her friends and that were. She was a really, yeah. just a really good girl. She basically knew what she wanted to do in her life and she was prepared to work hard to get there. Yeah, exactly. So there was a boy at school called Hiroshi Miyano who asked Junko out several times, but she turned him down. I don't know. She just wasn't interested. That's all I got from it. I don't know if she wasn't interested in him or she wasn't interested in romance. Yeah. Yeah. But she just wasn't interested. Fair enough. <laughs> Um, it didn't. He didn't take this well, as as he had never been turned down before. Oh, oh what was he like? A uh, he stud muffin. Uh, well, yeah, pretty much. That's, yeah. he wasn't. He was used to getting what he wanted. Right. No one ever said no to him, and right. I think that probably includes like parents. You know, mm. not just girls. Like yeah. I think nobody. Yeah. Ever said no to him. Right. Okay. He was known as a bully in school, which okay. doesn't surprise me. Mm-hmm. And most people were scared of him, and it wasn't the. It wasn't just because he was a bully that they were scared of him. He had ties to the Yakuza, which is the Japanese mafia. Oh, right, okay. John actually knew that. I had mentioned the Yakuza to John. He went, oh, yeah, I know that's the Japanese mafia. And I was like... Is that from a football... I have a football game. Uh, from a film. From a film. Yeah, John says, see, I do learn things from watching films. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. All right, then. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> so... On the 26th of November, 1988, Junko was riding her bike home after work, and it was about 8.30pm. Mm-hmm. A boy called Nobuharu Minato p- approached her and kicked Junko off her bike, oh. and then ran off. Lovely. Hiroshi, the guy that we were just talking about, Hiroshi Miyano, just so happened to see this, so he walked over and offered to walk her home, and she accepted. Mm-hmm. But Nobuharo was actually one of Hiroshi, Hiroshi's friends. They had been walking around the neighbourhood looking for girls to rob and rape. Oh, right. Lovely. Lovely. And they had actually saw Junko, so Hiroshi had told Nobuharo to kick, go and kick her off her bike mm-hmm. so that he could go and act like the like, nice guy, you know, the, the hero coming yeah, to her rescue. Rescue the damsel in distress and, and all that. Yeah, that's exactly what they did. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So instead of walking Junko home... Hiroshi led her to a nearby warehouse and he raped her. But surely she would know that no, that's not the way home. Well, it could have been near her home, I don't know. Mm. But he he then took her to a, ne- a nearby hotel and raped her again, but he also threatened to kill her, so... Maybe she was just scared. I think she, yeah, I think she was just scared. Oh, wait. Oh. I actually do know that. I think I might have heard this one, actually. It's now ringing a bell in my head. Okay. I feel like I have heard this, like I, something's just sort of <laughs> popped in my head going, I have heard this before, maybe. But carry on. Can okay. I, can I, I'll let you know if like, okay. I get more details because I, I, I have, yeah, carry on. Okay, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> right. My favourite phrase, carry yeah, on. Yeah, carry on. So, from the hotel, Hiroshi phoned Nobuharu, mm-hmm. the one that kicked off the bike, yeah. and his other two friends, Joe Ogura and Yasushi Watanabe, right? So I'll tell you now that, that, that these are the four main people in this story. So right. there's Hiroshi, 
Nobuharu, Joe, and Yasushi. Right. These are the four main perpetrators. Right. So when when I go through this story and I say the boys, these That's are who I'll be referring to. Right. Okay. Because there there is. Well, yeah. yeah that, I'll just that's <laughs> they're 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 the the, the people, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he phoned. So Hiroshi had phoned his, those three guys mm-hmm. and told them what he had done. Right. So Joe asked Hiroshi to keep Junko so that they and other friends could sexually assault her. He asked her to ha, asked him to keep her, ha, like just that to keep oh. her. That's horrible. Yeah, that's isn't horrible, it? isn't it? Yeah. So these friends actually had a history of gang rape. Right. And they had recently kidnapped and raped another girl who, but they had released her afterwards. Mm-hmm. So these are four horrible boys. They sound like it. I mean, and these are school kids. Remember this. These yeah. are school kids. That's right, yeah. So at 3am, Hiroshi took Junko to a park where his friends were waiting. They told her that they knew where she lived and that members of the Yakuza would kill her family if she tried to escape. Right. So I think a lot of this is why she went along with it because obviously they're all going to have heard of the yeah the the Yukisa, yeah. so it's probably a scary thing. So do we know if her family's like worried about her at this point or? Um, not yet. They will be. Yeah. But I'll get to that. Mm-hmm. So they so they gang raped her, and they took took her to Nobuharu's house where he lived with his parents right. and his brother, and that's where they kept Junko for. 40 days. I know I keep saying, sometimes I say Junko and sometimes I say Junko, mm-hmm. but as I said, I'm not quite sure how it's pronounced. So, right, okay. so they kept her for 40 days. But what I will say as well here is that I've called this episode 40 Days of Hell. Mm-hmm. And I've said they've kept her for 40 days. Mm-hmm. But there's so many different accounts saying that it was 44 days that she was held for. Right. And she is referred to as, like, when talking about her story, as 44 Days of Hell. Right. There was actually a song called... 44 days of hell i think there's been like maybe sort of if there's been sort of documentaries or films it's 44 days of hell but i actually counted the days and it was 40 they kept her for 40 days Mm -hmm. so this is why i'm calling it 40 days of hell if i've got that wrong in any way i do apologize but as i said i counted the days Uh that i've seen accounts for and it is 40 days and i have seen other people referring to it as 40 days so whether or not it's 40 or 44, that's a hell of a lot. she's added on a few days for other reasons that she still felt like it's hell afterwards or... I have no idea how, what, I don't know. But as I said, yeah. like, for, to me it was 40 days that she was kept for. Right. I apologise if I'm wrong in any way. Um, but even if it was 40 or it was 44, that's a long time that for is. what is going to happen to this girl. It's horrendous. They kept, so he, they kept her in, in his house? Yes. So his parents? Yes, we will and get onto that as well. Okay. So, uh, I'm just about to tell you, actually. Um, Junko was introduced to Nobuharu's parents as his girlfriend at first. Right. So Junko went along with it because she was just, she, as I say, she was terrified that her family were going to be yeah. hurt or killed. Right, okay. So Nobuharu told his parents that Junko would be staying for a while and that she would be staying in the basement. Okay. However, somewhere along the line, the parents knew exactly what was happening and they did nothing to really? stop it. Yeah, they did absolutely nothing to stop it. They later said that they didn't do anything because they were they were aware of Hiroshi's connections to the Yakuza. Right. So they were scared. Plus, no, their son Nobuharu was often violent to them. Right. Okay. So they're obviously, this these people are just not just not nice people. These no, kids are. I know they sound horrific. Yeah, and the brother knew as well. I'm not sure if the brother was older or younger. Right. But the brother did know as well and also did nothing about it. Right. Okay. On the 27th of November, Junko's parents reported her missing to the police. So I think that was the, was it the next day. I think it was, did I say it was the 26th she got yeah. kidnapped? So, yeah, so they were worried. So when the four boys heard that she was now a missing person, they made her, uh, Junko phone her parents and tell them that she had run away. Oh, right. And that she was staying with friends. Right. So she told her mum that she was safe and that she didn't want to be found and to call off the search. So, after, I mean, it, it did take a lot of persuasion, but her mum did agree to call it off. Right. Because, well, Junko was saying, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not a missing person. Right. I'm fine. I'm just... I don't want to come home. Yeah, I don't want to come home. So the, uh, her mum called the police to let them know that, Jun- that Junko was okay. So there was... She wasn't a missing person. Nobody oh, was wow. looking for her. What a shame. Which is awful, isn't it? Yeah, that's totally awful. Okay, so... This is where it's getting bad. I mean, I know, obviously, it's been bad. She's been raped. Mm-hmm. She's been kidnapped. Mm-hmm. This is where it really starts to 
to get into it in right, the okay. detail. Okay. So, trigger warning for anybody that's listening, if you didn't switch off before, you've changed your mind, now's the time to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, these four boys held Junko captive in the basement and they tortured her and raped her. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just them who were abusing her, though. Right. They invited other Yakuza friends to come over and rape Junko and it's thought that there was possibly more than a hundred men involved. Oh my god. So there's like over a hundred people knew what was happening and not one single person did anything about it. That is awful. There were times when she could be raped by up to 12 different men in a day. Really? Mm. Wow. What a shame. According to their trial statements later, the, so obviously they did get caught. Mm-hmm. The four boys raped Junko over four hundred times, and that was just them. Right. That's not including this these other a hundred other men. This is the, these four boys oh. raped her over four hundred times. That's horrific. Well, yeah, it is horrific. But I'm kind of like, how did they know it was over four hundred times? Were they counting? Well, yeah, because that is oh, a lot of times. Yeah, and why would you count? That is just horrific. Yeah. So right, okay. So they hung her from the ceiling and they used her as a punch bag. She was forced to eat live cockroaches. Uh, she had to drink her own pee and she was forced to masturbate in front of them. They also forced her to dance and sing while they beat her. Why? Because they're obviously sick bastards. Well, yeah. I mean, what's the... But really, I mean, why one girl? Why, why, why? <laughs> can't answer you. They uh, inserted objects into her vagina and anus, including a lit light bulb, <gasps> fireworks, bottles, an iron bar, and scissors. Oh my god! Hey, do you feel sick? That's that's. Awful. I told I told you that's. Right. Okay. You want a breather, or do you want to uh-huh. carry on? Carry on. Carry okay. On. They burned her vagina and clitoris with cigarettes and lighters, and they dripped hot wax onto her eyelids. They hit her in the face with golf clubs uh-huh. and smashed her face into the concrete floor. How did she actually survive? Wow. The, I mean... This bit I actually really felt sick at was they tore off her left nipple with pliers. Oh my God. And they pierced her breasts with sewing needles. Oh, that's awful. We are both holding on to her breasts. <laughs> oh my God, hugging myself here. I know, because it, it's horrendous, isn't it? That's I mean, like, awful. I actually felt sick at that bit. That's, why would you do that to somebody? And I mean, like, I mean, she must be in an immense pain. Of yeah, and especially if they hurt her down there, and yet they're still raping her. Mm-hmm. The amount of pain that she's going to she be must feeling. have been that must have been excruciating. Like, just I don't know how, I don't know. Oh, so funny. as you can imagine, she kept losing consciousness, and each time they would dunk her head into cold water to wake her up. So they made sure that she was conscious through every single little bit. Mm-hmm. Of this ordeal. Yeah. That, how horrendous is that? They were, they didn't torture her while she was unconscious. They were like, no, you, you have to be yeah. awake. Mm-hmm. And this girl did nothing. She, did, did, she nothing. did nothing to well, them. Was it because she rejected him at the start? Yeah, because he was pissed off. Because he re- she rejected him. And his, and his pals were obviously just sick bastards who decided to get involved. Yeah. Um, at one point, Junko did try to call the police. I don't know how she got to a phone, mm-hmm. um, but she did dial the number, but before she got to say anything, Hiroshi caught her and hung right. up. So the police did call back, but Hiroshi answered and said the call was a mistake and that they didn't need any help. Right. And as you can imagine, Junko was punished for this. Mm-hmm. So her punishment was that her legs and her feet were doused in lighter fluid and oh. set on fire. Oh my goodness. They inserted a large bottle into her anus, which caused severe internal bleeding. I'm not bloody surprised. She started convulsing, and the boys thought that she was faking a seizure, so they set her on fire again. Like, why would you even think that she was faking that? Of course she was all in torture you your poor to. I mean, Jesus Christ. These, mm, these boys... Horrific. Mm-hmm. So n- remember, Junko was kidnapped in November, mm-hmm. so it's winter. Right. And they made her sleep outside on the balcony, and on some other occasions they made her sleep in a freezer. In a freezer? Yeah. They must have maybe like a walk-in freezer or something like that. I mean, or... you've got to say, how did she not die? How did she survive? I have no idea. I mean, like, I she just... must have been I think they must, they must have just kept 
bringing her back. I mean, like, I because mean, they, I mean, to say that she was sleeping outside on the balcony, surely they didn't leave her out all night to sleep on the balcony because she would have froze to death, surely. Or she would have well, got hypothermia well, or, yeah. you know, the, and yeah. to sleep in a freezer all night, surely that would... Well, yeah. So I'm thinking that maybe they didn't, they maybe just left her there for a while and then brought mm-hmm. her back in. Mm-hmm. Um, so all the bones in her hand were broken and because her legs were so badly damaged, it took her over an hour to walk downstairs to the toilet. She... Eventually, though, she actually lost bladder and bowel control. I'm not surprised. And because of that, because she was obviously peeing on the floor and stuff, she got beaten even more. Mm-hmm. So it got to the stage where she couldn't even eat or drink and she'd be sick after each attempt. Mm-hmm. So, of course, for that she was beaten. So she was just getting punished for everything. everything. Now, this is really this is horrendous. 16 days into Junko's kidnap, she could have been rescued. Really? Mm-hmm. One of the other boys, so obviously not one of the, the four, as I said, yeah. the four boys, yeah. not, not one of them. One of the, one of the other boys who raped her, he was called Kyochi Ehara. He went home and he told her, his brother, that he had been bullied into raping Junko. Right. So his brother told their parents and they, the parents contacted the police. Right. So two police officers went to Nobuharu's house. Uh-huh. But whoever, I don't know who, who it was that answered the door, but they said, no, there's no girl inside. Right. So the, the police okay. were invited to come and have a look. So they're like, yeah, come in, have a look around. Mm-hmm. And the police said no. Because these idiots thought that the invitation alone was sufficient proof that nothing was going on. Really? Because, because they'd said, oh, come in and have a look. You know, we're not doing anything wrong. So they're like, oh, well, if they've invited us in, there's obviously... No, they were trying to call your bluff. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, if they had searched the house, they would have found Junko and her ordeal would have lasted 16 days instead of Which 40. Is enough. Yeah, but instead of 40. And she probably could have, she could have recovered. Mm-hmm. And her injuries, you, you, you know, she, she, she could have healed, she could have survived. And rightfully so, those police officers got the sack for failing to follow procedure. Yeah, but I, agree. I I hope they fucking I hope they're feeling guilty for that. Hope so. Because could have saved that poor girl. Yeah, she could have been saved. I mean, sixteen days—that's still a hell of a lot to endure. Mm-hmm. But as you said, they, she could have survived. Yeah. So on the fourth of January, nineteen eighty-nine, the boys challenged Junko to a game of solitaire. Right. Junko won the game, so this really pissed them off. So they attacked her. They beat her with an iron barbell. They were and they were like kicking her and punching her. They put two short candles on her eyelids, so they so they got burned with the hot the hot wax. Mm-hmm. They made her stand and they kept hitting her feet with a stick. Mm-hmm. And at that point, she just collapsed and started having convulsions. Mm-hmm. There was pus seeping out of her infected burns, mm-hmm. and the boys put plastic bags over their hands so they wouldn't get pus on them. And I'm like, if that's so much an inconvenience that you don't want to get pus on your hands, why don't you just try stopping? Well, yeah, exactly. Like, why? But no, yeah, why? they kept on beating her. And they dropped an exercise ball on her stomach yeah. several times as well. Oh. I did actually read it in one thing. I didn't actually write it down, but I did read that she was got pregnant from all the rapes. But mm-hmm. I don't know if that right, was okay. true or not. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. But there's no way would a fetus fucking survive. No, no way. So I'm not sure about that. Right, okay. But then they poured lighter fluid onto her thighs, arms, face and stomach and set her on fire. Oh my goodness. This attack, this attack last, la, sorry I can't speak. This attack lasted for two hours and Junko died later that day. So I'm assuming that they must have put out the fire and left her when she was still alive because it wasn't them that actually realised that she was dead. Right. It was... Nobuharu's brother who found her right. he went down to the basement the next day uh-huh. so it was the day after that attack to check on her so so they said like he knew exactly yeah. what was going on and he phoned Nobuharu and told him that, uh, that Junko appeared to be dead right. so the boys came back to the house and they wrapped Junko's body in blankets and put her in a travel bag mm-hmm. then they put her body into a 55 gallon oil drum and filled it with wet cement and later that day they disposed of the drum with Junko's body in it into a cement truck in Tokyo. Yeah there's actually a picture and of this oil drum. Is that because I'm rubbing my feet? Yeah. I'm rubbing my feet on the carpet. 
I don't know why. It just feels nice. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's actually a photo online mm-hmm. and the, of the drum right. with the concrete and you just see Junko's hair mm. sticking out the top and it's just awful. Oh, dear. That's horrible. So they probably thought that they'd gotten away with it. Mm-hmm. But on the 23rd of January 1989, Hiroshi and Joe were arrested for the gang rape of... Did I tell you about the 19... I've missed a bit out. Um, well, Did... you, know, you told me that they were, they were... That's what they were doing, is that they were coming... Yeah, the, but... Their plan was to obviously... No, I missed girls. out a bit. I missed out a bit, sorry. After the police officers got the sack for failing to follow procedure... Mm-hmm. I went straight on to tell you about the game of solitaire mm-hmm. and the attack. I missed a paragraph out. Right. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm just, I'm stupid. So after that, eventually Junko's face became un- irrecognisable. Uh-huh. It was so swollen that it was difficult to make out her features. Right. Her body was so damaged that it started to smell. Uh-huh. And apparently it was like a rotten smell. Mm-hmm. And that caused the boys to lose interest in her sexually. So it was right. still alright to beat her up, uh-huh. but they didn't want to have sex with her anymore. Right. Because of this, the boys kidnapped a 19-year-old on, their, on her way home from work and they gang raped her. And then they let her go. So why let her go and not Junko? I don't know. But this is what they got... This is the, what I'm talking about. Right. Sorry. With the kidnap. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so they were arrested for, for that. that. Mm-hmm. As soon as I read that, I thought, I missed a bit. <laughs> so on the 29th of March, two officers came to question them as women's underwear had been found in their homes. So their homes must have been searched after they were arrested for mm-hmm. that rape. Yeah. During the questioning, one of the officers led Hiroshi into believing that he knew that he had murdered someone. So Hiroshi assumed that Joe had confessed to them murdering Junko. Right, okay. But he hadn't. He hadn't. So Hiroshi just went, oh, right, okay, we've been caught, and told them where to find Junko's body. So the police were thinking, what's, uh, what, what's what? What the fuck? Because like, right. they were actually referring to the murder of a different woman mm-hmm. and, and her seven-year-old son that had happened nine days before Junko's kidnap. Right, okay. So... Because obviously the police didn't even know that Junko could be dead because they weren't searching for her. Yeah, they, she wasn't missing. Yeah, yeah. So they had no idea about Junko. So no. they, that's what they were like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. But the... So this woman that got murdered, that case is still unsolved. So that, that was just a side note. <laughs> that, that's unsolved. Mm-hmm. So that's what they were talking about. But So Hiroshi, Hiroshi actually confessed to Junko by accident, really. Right, okay. So the police found Junko's body in the drum the next day and she was identified by fingerprints. So on the 1st of April 1989, Joe Ogura was arrested for a separate separate sexual assault Mm -hmm. and then he was re-arrested for Junko's murder along with Yasushi Watanabe Nobuharu Minato Minato and Nobuharu's brother. Mm -hmm. So because of the boys' ages, their identities were actually sealed by the court Right. As they were all considered to be juveniles at the time because they were all either 18 or under at the time of the crime. Right. But it was actually a journalist that discovered their identities and published them. Quite right. Well, that was my thinking. <laughs> Not even funny, but why should they? I mean, they weren't that, I mean, cause they weren't that young. I mean, they were... I mean, I'll tell you the ages as we go along. With what... Well, I thought once you were 18, you were in that class as an adult anyway. So if some of them were 18... Already... Well, one of them was 18. Hiroshi was 18 and the rest were under yeah, 18. Right, okay. So it was 18 and under. So right. they were classed as juveniles. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm sorry. You know right from wrong. You know that murder and rape, rape and torture is wrong. Mm-hmm. Even if you're a juvenile, you know that. So exactly. no, I, agree I don't that. agree with them having them, their identities sealed. So I'm... I'm glad that, that um, journalist the journalist uh, published it. Mm-hmm. So all four of the well, all four boys they pled guilty to committing bodily injury that resulted in death rather than murder. So basically, it must be because they weren't they didn't actually plan on murder and they were just torturing her torturing her and she died. Uh, yeah, led to her death. Yeah. Well, to be honest, I think it should be punished for both. Because they did end up murdering her. Well, they, yeah, they should be. I think they should have been done for murder. Whether but. they think that any of those things that they inflicted on her weren't going to potentially cause her to die. Oh, I mean, burning her and surely they must have known that 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 could very well. There's a, a uh, very big chance that she was going to die. So to me, there's an intent there. Whether whether they fully meant to murder her or not, there's still an intent of. Oh, definitely. So in July 1990, Hiroshi was sentenced to 17 years in prison 
as yes. he was the ringleader. Deserved more than 17 years. Oh my god, you're gonna get annoyed. Oh, because that was the most. Because right. he was the right, he was the ringleader. Right. But he appealed his sentence. How, How have you, you got that? the audacity <laughs> to appeal your sentence? As all of them appealed their sentences, oh, I'll really? tell you that now. Mm-hmm. All of them did, which is absolutely ridiculous, considering what the other ones got. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he got an extra three years, so it's probably just as well that. Yeah. He, so uh, appealed, appealed. More. He appealed and ended up with 20 years. Oh, well, I suppose that's something. <laughs> so he was 18 at the time of the murder. Apparently his mum paid 50 million yen, which is 425,000 American dollars in compensation. And she had to sell the family home to get the money. Huh. So I'm like, well, that's shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, but then I'm not even funny. They knew what was happening down there. No, that, was, that wasn't... That oh. parent didn't know. That was Hiroshi's. Oh, no, sorry. That wasn't Nobuharu's. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh right, okay, we'll yeah. just keep going. So he was so he so he got he got twenty years, but he was arrested again in January two thousand and thirteen for fraud, but he was released without charge later that month due to insufficient evidence. Nobuharu Minato received a four to six years prison sentence, but when he appealed it they changed it to five to nine years. He was sixteen at the time of the murder. His parents and his brother mm-hmm. weren't charged with anything, which I do not agree with. No. They knew exactly what was going on and they did absolutely nothing about it. They could have saved a girl's life, yeah. but they didn't. Mm-hmm. They could have saved a girl's life, right? I'm, I'm not sure how soon into it that they knew what was going on, but yeah. it, was pro- it was probably pretty soon. Yeah. So that girl could have maybe just had a few days of, which is horrendous. Yeah. But, but she could have still been alive. And she might not have had, the injuries might not have been yeah. that bad. But, um, I'm sorry, in my opinion, they should have been punished well, was that for like something. Sort of like aiding and abetting almost, yeah. because they've known what's been happening, so yeah. They could have saved a girl's life. They knew that what was going on, so they should have been punished. Absolutely. Definitely. Right. But right. they walked away with absolutely nothing. So after he was released, Nobuharu moved back in with his parents and hasn't done a day of work in his life. In 2018, he was arrested for attempted murder he beat a man with a metal rod and then slashed his throat with a knife. So the last thing I could find out on him was that he was on trial for it in 2019, but I don't actually know what what happened. So hopefully he's in prison. Deserves to be. Yeah. Of his life, if you ask me. So Joe Ogura, he was sent to juvenile prison for eight years. He was 17 at the time of the murder. Apparently after his release, he was heard bragging about his role and what happened to Junko. In 2004, he assaulted a guy called Takatoshi Isono. Isono. He was an acquaintance and Joe thought that his girlfriend was cheating on him with this guy. So he shoved him in his truck, drove him to his mum's bar and he beat Tatashi... Tatashi... Sorry. Tatashi... I can't see it. I can't see it. He beat him for four hours at this bar mm-hmm. and he was sentenced to seven years in prison for that. But Joe's mum sounds like an absolute delight. She apparently went to Junko's grave and vandalised it. What? The reason for this? She said she did it because Junko had ruined her son's life. Oh my What a piece God. of work. Ruined her son's life. No, he ruined that on his own and ruined her, yeah. like, Junko's life. I was absolutely I, fuming when I read oh that. God. I was like... I, I get he's your son, you love him, but he did a very, 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 very bad thing. And that is not that poor girl's fault. And no, that is not that girl's fault in she any did, she didn't way. Ask, she didn't ask for that. No, I mean, how? How? Is how? it any wonder that her son's turned out like that? If that's well, the way that she conducts herself. That was my thought. I thought, she, if that's the way that she thinks, mm-hmm. and her, I, I'm not surprised. No. Bitch. So, moving on. Yeah, moving on from that bitch. Moving on. Y- Yasushi Watanabe, he was originally sentenced to three to four years in prison, but after he appealed, he got an upgraded sentence of five to seven years. So they upgraded all the sentences. They upgraded all the sentences after the appeal. So, so well, yeah, they should have. Yeah, but he was seventeen at the time of the murder. Um, so he, but he was the only one that doesn't seem to have gotten any trouble afterwards. Like right. he seems to have done his time, and nothing else has been heard about him. Right. So Junko's parents. They weren't happy, of course, at the sentences. And they won a civil suit against the parents of Nobuharu Minato, whose house yeah. that Junko had been kept in. Yeah. So they were obviously meant to pay like compensation to Junko's family, but Junko's family never actually got that money because 
the parents gave the money to Nobuharu, Joe and Yasushi. <gasps> and they spent it on gambling, alcohol and cars. What? How? So these get... parents were obviously no better. But how could they get, if it's if it an actual, you know, going through court to get that as a legal thing, how have they got away with giving them... Well, they've, 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 just, they've gave the money to them and said, no, sorry, we haven't got any money, so we can't pay compensation. They so they care. obviously don't care. They also don't care that this girl was being tortured in her their house and died because the least they could do is let that family have some money mm-hmm. and they gave it to three of the perpetrators and let them go and spend it. That's awful. Mm-hmm. That's horrifically awful. That's, <laughs> That's even a word. Yep. So during sentencing, the judge said that exceptionally grave and atrocious violence had been conf- in- conflicted, sorry, had been inflicted upon the victim, and that Junko had been murdered so brutally at the young age of seventeen that her soul must be wandering in torment. That's so bad. That's so bad. one person who was spectating in the gallery, mm-hmm. they actually fainted after hearing the details of what Junko went through. Wow. And Junko's mum, she had a mental breakdown and she had to receive psychiatric treatment. That's awful. <sighs> Why could you do that to someone? That. Like repeatedly, not even like once, but repeatedly. It's horrendous. Do that to someone. It's horrendous. I mean, that is awful. I mean, you must know the pain that you're causing that person, and yet you think that's all right, and you carry on doing it. And why would you do it to, I mean, this Hiroshi, he's like, ooh, she rejected me. I've got a grudge against her. Still, you still don't do that. But the other three guys, and the other hundred mm-hmm. men that were raping her, mm-hmm. what the hell, what has this girl done to you? Exactly. She she just said no to a boy asking her out and she ended That's up... That's what she got. She paid with her life in a really horrible, unbelievable it, way. It's, I mean, it's, 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 yeah, it's just absolutely horrific. I've never heard anything that bad. And as I said, those parents, you've got... One of the parents goes and vandalises her grave and says that she ruined her son's life. You've got the other ones that won't even pay compensation give it to three of them There's... three of them that's awful i know I you mean, can... they all corrupt by this mafia um uh, well maybe i don't Is know maybe partly to sort of blame for their actions of, of how they, they were but still i don't know but for such young people to be so violent is really worrying and for not <laughs> much of a reason no i mean not that any reason is acceptable they thought but... it was all right to go and do this to another human being that must have been awful. So, yeah, that, I, I told you. I, I really did have second thoughts. At, I mean, I said to you yeah. that uh, when I was doing it, I was like, mm, I'm not so sure about doing this case. And you're like, oh, just do it. Yeah. Because obviously you didn't realise what it was because no. I didn't tell you. Mm-hmm. And you're like, no, no, you'll be fine. You, I want to hear it. Just you do it. And I'm like, oh. I mean, don't get wrong. I mean, I, I am glad that you've done it because, you know, it, it's, it's... As we as we say with all our, our episodes, you know, we've, every victim's story... Yeah. Does deserve to be heard. Exactly. But some are harder than others, and oh, that, that was I think one. this was definitely mm, probably the hardest. Actually, I think this is yeah. the hardest one I've done. That's and as I said, and I felt sick doing it, and I read out a couple of bits to John, and even he was like, "Oh my god, that is horrific!" Like, yeah. you know, usually things don't really affect him. He's like, "Ah, oh, whatever," you know. But you, you know, to tell him that, and he was like. Are you sure you want to do that case? And mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know, but it's yeah, done now. That is a bad one. And it was, yeah, I think that's definitely the worst what one I've done. Poor girl. I mean, I mean, her parents as, bad as well. As, as bad as it sounds, you know, it, you know, maybe, you know, obviously nobody should ever want her, like, to die, but for, for the pain that she was going through and if there was no way out for her, then, you know, maybe, if her suffering, you know, her suffering was ended not in the way that you would have wanted her to, but you know, she might have had like, a lot of long term effects after that, and she might have. We don't know. So maybe you know, at least, I mean, sometimes death is maybe preferable to what she could have ended up like. I mean, to have to live with that for the rest of her life, or, or to how much longer would it have went on? Yeah, well, well you know, I mean, I don't. Th- I think she would have died no matter what. I think they were just going to keep keep going on until she died. Yeah. I mean, they say that they were, you know, it wasn't murder, but I think I don't think they would have let her go. No. So I think it would have went on until she died. Yeah. And they had all this time to do it because she wasn't a missing person. Nobody was looking for her. No. Horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. And she was 
there was she was begging with them just to kill her and get over and done with, and I'm not surprised. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she she was probably begging with them, probably quite soon. Soon, isn't it? I mean, like even probably before those the sixteen days before she could have been rescued, she'd probably already been pleading with them. Mm-hmm. And that's why, like, us. you know, I know I know the police have a hard job and stuff, and they you know maybe don't always get everything right, but you've got to take everything seriously, surely. Surely they must have to take everything seriously. They, sometimes it might be nothing. Yeah. No, nine times out of ten, maybe it is nothing. But surely it's better to check properly and thoroughly. Yeah. And in that case, I'm sorry, somebody has told you that there's a girl in that house being abused and tortured. And you, don't even step and in you the door. do not even step over that front door. No. No. They should they should have got more than sack. Yeah, they they failed. They failed they failed big time. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So yeah. So I'm 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 glad we're finished. Yeah, me too. Cause uh, that was quite horrific. I'm not I'm not sure what listen to that again. <laughs> no, you know, like sometimes we listen back to our episodes. I don't think I'm going to listen back to that one. I think that one's just going to be filed away in the back of my my mind somewhere, so I don't have to mm-hmm. remember it because I'm. Just, yeah. I'm, I'm glad I've told it, but yeah, poor girl. Yeah. Poor girl. So thank you for listening. If if you listened, yes, if you managed yeah. to make it all the way through. Uh, if you managed to make it all the way through, thank you for listening. And if you want to follow us on social media, we're on Instagram and Twitter. We are crime underscore divers underscore pod. We have a Facebook page, Crime Divers Podcast. <laughs> we're on YouTube, <laughs> which is Crime Divers Podcast as well. I had a total mind blank. You can email us. At crime underscore divers underscore pod at outlook.com. And we are on, if you'd like to support the show, we are on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash crime divers. And the prices start from as little as a pound a month. And you can get early access to our episodes. We're going to put our fuck ups on there. Because <laughs> that's what they're called. have quite a lot. You get two, two Patreon two, episodes a month. Yeah, two Patreon episodes a month. And, you know, you can chat to us on there if you want. You can send us a message. You can request cases. You can, you know, well, you can request cases on any of our... Yeah. And if you can, subscribe, rate, review. Well done. <laughs> yeah, a five-star rating would be absolutely fantastic. If you don't like us, just don't bother leaving us a review at all. But <laughs> if you do like us, a five-star would be fantastic. Exactly. And on our side note, before we go, I don't know, we've not told anybody, but we have made it into some charts. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I did put it on, um, on social media, but not everybody who listens is on social media. But, yeah, we actually, Crime Divers made it into two sets of charts. Mm-hmm. We made it into the UK charts, mm-hmm. podcast charts, and we made it into the Denmark I know. charts. So, do you know what John said to me? He says... Because because we did better in the De- Denmark charts. I can't remember what number we were at. We're at it's, 145. 145, is that what it was? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we're not at the top there. No, but, no, no. You know, we're not there yet. Um, he says, maybe you should do a case from Denmark. Well, just well, to say thank you to those people in Denmark who are listening to us. That's a good plan. So actually. I did actually think maybe we should have a look for a Denmark case just to say thank you. Right. But, of course, thank you to everybody who listens. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, but because there's so many podcasts out there and, it, like, you know, so many true crime, I mean, it's a really popular yeah. um, category. So to actually get into any chart, even if it is quite far down, it is amazing. Oh, like, yeah. absolutely fantastic. That was one of our goals, wasn't it? Yeah. That we wanted to get into the charts. So... No. So our next goal is to try and work our way up it a little bit. And get yeah. in some more charts. Yes. Because there's... So many. How many countries is there in the... I don't even God, know how many countries there is in the world. There's so, so many. But, but to get into the UK, especially because we started out with UK crime. Well, yeah. Exactly. And that's where we, are, we live. We are in the UK. Yeah, so, yeah, so that was that, fantastic. That probably means the most, but, you know, any chart that we get into yeah. is just brilliant. And so that's all thanks to you guys so keep exactly. listening keep subscribing and rating and reviewing and and yeah and hopefully we've not put you off of this no, episode I, I do apologize if that if that was too much i'm sorry they're not all like that no but they're not all i like mean they're obviously not all none of them are going to be good because it's true crime but there yeah. are certainly some that aren't quite as bad as i said that was definitely the worst yeah and surely can we get worse than that well, well, no, I don't well. know. We, we say no, but you just never know. Never yeah. know what we might come across. But anyway. Okay, we better go now because we're just waffling. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think they've had enough of us for one day. Probably. <laughs> right, thanks for listening. Thanks, bye. Bye.
It's that moment when you know that you or your loved one must go to the emergency department. Whether it's a child's broken arm, symptoms of a heart attack, or a mental health crisis. At St. Clair's Health, we understand that you don't want to be in an overcrowded waiting room. You want excellent, compassionate, safe care. And now, St. Clair's Health is the safe, faster ER, and you will be seen in 15 minutes or less. Specializing in pediatrics, adults, and now an accredited geriatric emergency department. You will receive the care that you deserve from exceptional specialized emergency department physicians and staff. At St. Clair's Health, you can be assured that every safety precaution during COVID has been taken and the hospitals and facilities are as safe as ever. St. Clair's Health also maintains the highest standard of cleaning protocols in every waiting area and exam room. Remember, when you hurt, St. Clair's is safe and the faster ER. Visit stclairs.com. That's stclairs.com. St. Clair's Health. Neighbors healing neighbors.